In this video, we're going to be talking about pitch notation and clefs. This thing that you see right here with these five lines, this is called a staff. We number inside in the staff lines and spaces starting from the bottom. So first line, second, third, fourth, and fifth. First space, second, third, fourth space. And we're going to write notes on this staff to designate pitches. And we use that using clefs. If you see something like this, you may know what this is. You may say, oh, there's a clef. That's actually not yet a clef. That's a clef sign. In order to become a clef, this has to be placed in a specific way on the staff. Now, this is called a G clef sign because you can imagine a letter G there centered around G4, the G above middle C. Similarly, you can imagine a stylized letter F, and that's centered on the F below middle C, F3. Finally, we have a stylized C centered on middle C. And when we place these on the staff, you get clefs. So first of all, treble clef. This note is G4, and as you just go up and down, you get G4, A4, B4, C5, D5, etc. Up and down using the lines and spaces. This is called bass clef when the fourth line is F3. These are the most frequently used clefs. If you, don't need, if you don't know these yet, you need to practice and learn these right away, and we'll give you some tools for doing that. The most commonly used C clef is alto clef, when this middle third line is C4. This is used in violas. So every time we look at a score from a string quartet or a symphony, there will be a viola part. You'll need to be able to read this clef. The final clef that we'll learn is this one. It's one up from the alto. So when this fourth line is middle C, this is called tenor clef. Tenor clef, this is used by cellos and bassoons when they're in the higher register. It's also a clef you'll encounter with some frequency. Focus your attention. If you don't read fluently either treble or bass clef, learn those right away. Become fluent in them. And that is to say, don't simply be able to go through a process which allows you to identify the name of a pitch. Be able to look at it and immediately know the name of a note when you see a note placed anywhere on the staff or even placed above or below. We can add what are called ledger lines. If we've got a higher note than that space above the staff, we can add a ledger line or even two ledger lines. And if you know treble clef, you just glance at that and you know that that's a C. That's the kind of fluency that you should have. Now, if I added another four ledger lines, that would be hard to read. So don't worry about that. If you already have these well, go on to alto. That's your next step. You want to really have a good grasp of alto and a decent fluency in tenor clef. These are things to work on over the next several weeks so that these are fluent skills that you have at your disposal. Another thing that you'll see frequently is something called the grand staff. And that pairs a treble clef on an upper staff with a bass clef on a lower staff united with a brace. This object is called the grand staff. It's used in piano music. It's used for the chorale style uh, exercises that we'll be doing later in this class. You'll see this a lot. So this should also be a familiar object to you. And one of the convenient things about this grand staff is that if I write one ledger line below, that's a C4. If I write one ledger line above, that's, again, a C4. So you can kind of imagine that there's one invisible line 
in the middle here. And otherwise, you just have a continuous stream of pitch up and down, covering most of the register that's used most of the time, for example, by human voices. Now, when we have a little detail here, something good to know, when you write a note, depending on the value of the note, and we'll talk about this later, uh, it may either be filled in or empty, but you write a little oval, and you want to make the, the wide part of the oval just on a bit of a diagonal like that. And you can also fill it in like that, either centered very legibly, either in the space or on the line. As you know, there are often beams added. The beams always go back toward the center. So if I, sorry, stems, stem is the term I want. If I add a stem to this note, it goes up because it goes back toward the center. This note is above that center line its stem goes down. If I write a note right on the center, either way is fine. Stems up go off from the upper edge, stems down go off from the lower edge of that little oval there. And if I'm beaming together multiple notes that have stems, for example, like this, I'm going to put the stems for the whole group in the direction that the majority of the notes want to go. The next step in learning these clefs, uh, we'll, we'll give you some practical exercises online that you, can, that you can do, but it's helpful to have some mnemonics. And one popular one is to uh, make up acronyms for the notes in the lines and spaces. So for example, treble clef, we've got E, G, B, D, and F. Uh, a popular one for that is Every Good Boy Deserves Favor, the title of a brilliant uh, play musical by Tom Stoppard. If you name the spaces, that gives you F, A, C, and E. FACE, the acronym. In the bass clef, G, B, D, F, A. We can simply vary our other ones. You notice it's a third, it's the same stream of letters. We just lose the E, we gain an A on top. Good boys deserve favor always. For example, A, C, E, and F for the spaces. Those can be helpful for the very beginning of knowing, a, of knowing to, how to read a clef. If you need to rely on one of those acronyms, you don't know the clef. You know the clef when you just see the note and you know the name of the note. There's one other thing that we're going to, one other tool that we're going to use to designate pitches. And that is if we've got a note, for example, that's an A, well, suppose I want to raise it or lower it a little bit. I can add a flat to lower the pitch. I can add a sharp to raise the pitch. Note, flats and sharps always go just before the note head in the same, aligned with the same note or space. If I want to raise the pitch or lower the pitch even more, I can use a double flat, which is simply two flats together. Or I can use a double sharp, and the double sharp looks like a letter X.